Well, collectors, uh, here we are. We're in the summer now, and it's uh, July 10th. And uh, Robbie and I just got home after uh, yesterday. We went to the Allentown show in Pennsylvania and spent about uh, three hours scouring through all the tables there. And uh, we bought some things. And I know uh, you guys seem to like these uh, unboxing type videos. Uh, so we thought we would show you what we uh, bought at uh, Allentown as well as a couple of things that came in um, earlier in the week. So we'll start with the Allentown stuff here. Oh my god, it's so heavy I can hardly even get it off here. Oh! Oh! Man! Well, what I'm going to show you is just stuff as it was bought. I haven't really even looked at it. Uh, we just got home, as I say, so you'll have to bear with me if I flub up on things, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, I know you don't get too excited about uh, a bayonet, but this is a, it's a plain, long-style bayonet with a nice uh, finish. Still has the, um, uh, what do you call it, F red felt in it, and a, and a nice blade, real nice blade. Uh, but what makes it a little bit um, more interesting than a, a normal bayonet, if you look on the uh, Ricasso, it has that dog with the sword in his mouth, which was produced by Sealheimer, and we don't see many of those, so that's, uh, that's kind of desirable. So, that's one, and... And more bayonets, I'm sorry, but uh, here we go with another one. Uh, it's got a fairly decent hilt on it. It's a long bayonet. And again, what's interesting about it, it's got the great uh, lobster, Peter Dan Krebs. We don't see that much, and it's kind of fun to have one of those in your collection. I think it is, anyhow. So that's... That's that. And yet another bayonet. This is a short one. Uh, the hilt's got a little wear to it, but, um, but again, the, the blade is really nice. Uh, and on the reverse, another Peter Dan Krebs. You'll see this one has the name around the lobster, whereas the other one didn't. So this one may be a little bit earlier, I think. You got to have a few bayonets in your collection, so uh, let's see what else is in here. Uh, this is something that uh, I always like. These uh, these first model Luftwaffe's with the uh, aluminum mounts and the gilded swastikas. I mean, that's uh, the leather is good on it. And it's got the aluminum hanger. You know, when you see a piece like that where the, the gilt is 100% and the leather is not nicked up at all. I'll show you the other side too so you can see the leather is really good. And then we have a nice blade, I think. Uh, not mint, but uh, fairly nice. And that one is produced by WKC. So that's, that's kind of a nice thing. Somebody will want that, I'm sure. And moving right along here, um, let's see what the next thing that... Yeah, here we go. This is easy to get to. Ta-da! Everybody likes SS Tigers. I know I do. Now this dagger, as you can see, just looking at the exterior of it, it has a very nice ebony grip, nickel-silver mounts, nickel-silver mounts on the uh, scabbard, 
got a little ding there, but that's the way it is sometimes. And the scabbard itself has an anodized finish, and the anodizing is in nice condition. And then as you can see, there's also a vertical hanger on it, uh, which is in good condition with a clip uh, marked A and DRGM, and it even has a, um, a belt loop. Uh, but there's something further that makes the dagger even more interesting. That uh, it has a number on the back of the cross guard. Now I haven't looked the number up yet. I hope it's an officer, but usually they're not. And the reason for that is there's really um, maybe one officer for every 50 enlisted men. So when we see early SS daggers, they're usually enlisted men. Uh, and the numbers aren't on the SS Dean Stalter list, which only lists officers. But sometimes we've had luck in, in finding their identities. And it's, um, the, the dagger was made by um, Gottlieb Hemisphere. Um, the blade is not full mint, but it's not bad either. It's, um, it is a ground room, which you'll find that a lot on um, serial numbered uh, SS's. Uh, the reason being that um, Rome uh, gave out uh, daggers with his inscription to members of the SS that were there since 1931 and had a good record. And then the obverse of the blade. So this is a pretty good dagger and uh, I can't wait to look up the number. I was happy to find that there at the show. Uh, let's see what else is here. Yeah, this is something really nice that I know you'll enjoy seeing. Uh, it's in a sock. We see a lot of socks in this business. Uh, none of them match, and uh, most of them don't look like they were washed either, but it's, um, it's part of the process, and uh, I save all my old socks, and then I send them to Joe Pankowski because he doesn't want to buy dagger bags. He likes to send his stuff out in socks, so I guess it doesn't matter to each his own. But what we have here... This is really a really a nice uh, a nice piece. As you can see, it's a Hitler Youth leader. And um, what I like to look at when I see a youth leader, I like to see that the wire grip wrap is still nice and tight and not all slinky. When it becomes loose, it's because the wood underneath the grip is wood shrunk over time and then of course the uh, wire doesn't fit as well and then it has a nice nice cap on it which identifies it as Hitler Youth with their diamond and so forth and then while I've got it up you can see that uh, the cross guard these are these cross guards were made of aluminum and the plating the silver plating did not adhere well to them so it's quite rare to see a youth leader dagger with that amount of silver on the cross guard and also on the bottom of it too you can see it has a lot of um, of silvering these are all things you want to look for on a on a youth leader um, I'll tell you one other thing too you, you the first thing you want to look at when you look at the cap you want to make sure that the upper part of the cap is part and parcel of the lower cap. If the upper portion of the cap is soldered on, it's no good. That's an easy way to tell a reproduction youth leader because a lot of them were made with a two-piece cap. So then looking further at the dagger, it, it has a very fine um, Horster Eagle. You'll see these daggers made by either ENF Horster or Icorn, and the producers used different eagles. If you get used to looking at them, you'll know what kind of a dagger it is made by without even taking the, the blade out. And then the leather is in beautiful condition. It's that real fine-grained Moroccan that they used. 
and uh, you, you don't see them often where there's no flaws at all. It's really nice and the fittings still have a lot of silvering on them. Uh, where they're darker is just where air has penetrated the silvering. So, so far this is a very desirable dagger. And we'll look at the, uh, the blade. Aha! There we have a real nice Horster nickel plated their blades. Icorn polished them. So you'll see usually a mirror finish on the uh, on the Horster types with the Hitler Youth motto. And then what's nice on the back, of course you want to you want to see the RZM uh, code uh, was 736 for Horster, and we like to see the RZM circle um, usually within the center segment of the blade. And this one still has a nice uh, washer on it and so forth. So, uh, so that's a pretty good purchase. I'm very happy with that. We'll put it back in the Pankowski sock. That'll be good for now. Keep it from getting scratched up. Now next what we have uh, this is a dagger that you guys may not be too familiar with. And here's another one. Uh, these are Slovak army daggers. And they're very, very desirable because um, uh, in the case of uh, this pair, they're both extremely well made. Uh, the plating is still 100% on them. You know, on a lot of the Axis daggers, they weren't made in Zoligan, so they don't necessarily have the quality of a German dagger, but they're very, very good. And the double cross here is the first sign that you know that um, the dagger is Slovak. And it's interesting, too, you'll see varied grips. On this piece, it's uh, kind of like a, a simulated mother of pearl, like they did with the govern German government official daggers. And on this piece, it looks like it's, a, um, it's an ivory grip. At least it appears to me. I'll have to have it tested, but it, it looks like ivory. And then we really got lucky on this pair of daggers because the blades are, are really nice. Not something you normally find with a, a Slavic dagger. Really, really nice blades. And these are great pieces to add a little variety to your collection. Slovak Army. You will also, once in a while, you'll see these grip plates will be black. Uh, and when the black color was used, the dagger was carried by a Slovak NCO. When they're white like this, um, it's an officer's dagger. So I think they're they're kind of nice. Hope I'm getting the right scabbards back here. They look look right. So that's a couple of couple of daggers you won't see very often, but are nice to have in your collection. Oh, something else too. I should have shown this. Um, this is very very rare. These are the hangers that go with the Slavic dagger. Uh, you don't you don't see them very very often, and this particular pair is still in really nice condition. The leather is still supple, the buckles are nice, and the snap clip. See, it has a spring on the other side. Uh, those hangers are uh, probably 30 times harder to find than the dagger, so that's a lucky break when you find that. So some good things there. Let's see what else Whitman has here in this satchel. Got a lot of cigars, but uh, let's see what this is here. Oh yeah, I remember these. Um, this um, we got a couple of uh, of SA daggers here. This one looks looks pretty nice. It's a, it's an early piece. Uh, the anodizing is not too bad. The grip is nice. Good early nickel fittings, and it um, it has a um, 
a group of number on the back and let's see how the blade looks on it yeah see now there it's a very very nice blade mint blade so that's a good dagger for somebody that's um, if you're just getting started and you want to get something that's uh, that's decent to get your heart going and uh, get you wanting more daggers this would be a good one uh, uh, who oh and uh, a good producer too and uh, Anton Wingen jr. So that's kind of a nice thing and then the next one uh, we have another essay here that's uh, this one's never been cleaned which I like I, I love it when the mounts have this dull nickel look uh, it just really talks speaks to you of its history and it has the early short hanger that's definitely original to the piece also this is what we call the snout nose clip because of the way it's shaped and again the anodizing is not bad on it and let's take a look at the blade here okay the blade is still bright it's got some grease on it and let's see what the other side looks like on it ah yeah we what we have here is an early um, ground room and there's that small icorn trademark that you like to see on those ground rooms so that's a that's a nice uh, early piece that's totally untouched looks like it just came out of veteran hands and if you're looking for something like that in a ground room, that's a great piece to get started with then. So next in this bag, uh, uh, I bought a, uh, you can never have too many of these, a good um, a trottle for a fireman's bayonet. People are always asking for them. They find a bayonet and then doesn't have a trottle and they want to complete it. So that's a good thing. Um, Normally with these they'll have a, a pink uh, cloth insert inside and you want to make sure the leather is still pretty sound on it that it's not going to break when you put it onto your bayonet so that's a good piece and then somebody just gave that to me they said here Whitman maybe you can use this it's a hanger that broke off from a, a Luftwaffe hanger but you know you can maybe you find one that doesn't have a clip or something so they that can be good for parts and that's all that's in this bag we still got more stuff though guys uh, this is another bayonet that I bought uh, I liked it um, uh, particularly because the um, it has a stag grip and it's got the um, EP and S style rivets but they're not offset as much as they usually are so I'm not sure that uh, EP and S made this bayonet because the blade is not marked but the blade is beautiful scabbard looks kind of long to me too let me just check it against another scabbard it just looks long let's see here No, I guess my eyes are deceiving me. That's the right length. Yep. So that's that. I think it's a very nice bayonet, though. It's, it's really good condition, and it still has the red felt in it, too. And I guess the mortise, yeah, the mortise lock works. So you can't go wrong with something like that. Beautiful, beautiful workmanship with the way the grip plates are fitted. You know, they're genuine stag and then it has the spanners on the other side that uh, hold the plates on so that's kind of nice let's see what else is in this bag oh yeah uh, army daggers are selling well these days so uh, I bought a I bought a pair of them 
uh, from a good friend of mine, LaRue Curran. You guys may know him. He's a nice man. Um, what's nice about these, uh, they're both made by uh, Robert Klass. And uh, when you look at the Klass bayonets, you want to see that uh, asterisk on the band. I've talked about that before. I think they both have them. Yeah, there's asterisks on the other band, too. And they both have nice, um, nice grips. But what you see with uh, class pieces a lot, if you look at the blade, it's really bright and nice. And that's because class like to nickel plate their blades, whereas most producers uh, just polish them. <laughs> I'll show you this other one too. Yeah, this one is a nice one too, and it's also nickel plated. So, you know, even though army daggers are common, uh, everybody needs one or two or five or six for their collection. So when they're in nice condition, I like to buy them and offer them to the community. So that's those two. Let's see what else is in this bag. Oh. Yeah, we have a... We have an early, early first model Luftwaffe, and it's real early. It's the kind with the staples that hold the fittings onto the scabbard. And the reason for that on these real early ones like this, the scabbard is a composition material. It's, it does not have a steel base like the later models. So that's why the staples were used. And it's also nice to see the silvering is still there between the sunwheel legs. When you see that, you know that the dagger hasn't got a lot of wear. And what also is cool on these are real early examples, a lot of times, like in the case of this one, the, the snap clip is marked. See that? It's a, it's a UE-10, I think, or UE-1. You don't see that on the, the later uh, nickel pieces. And these are hard to find. And what's kind of interesting about this one, when you turn it over, the, uh, the lower fitting staple is on the other side. I don't know whether that's a factory error or what, but, uh, um, but that's what it is. And it doesn't look like anybody's touched it ever. And it's also nice it has a, um, uh, a belt loop with it. Let's see what the blade looks like. Yeah, the blade is nice and... Oh, that's right, yeah, look who made that. That's really cool. It's a, it's a um, Balloon Man, Gebruder Heller. We see the Balloon Man sometimes on the early DLV glider pilots, but not much on Luftwaffe daggers, and certainly not much on an initial production piece like this. So I think this is a... Um, a desirable piece. I like it. Now, what else could be in this bag? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Here we have a real fine uh, naval dagger. Uh, as you can see, it's it's got an orange grip, a deep, deep orange grip, and that's very, very desirable. Um, the grip is in perfect condition. The scabbard is really nice. Um, this is a WKC. You can kind of tell that by how high off the, the scabbard the bands are. Uh, and then what's um, happened here, the, um, the pommel uh, has been turned the opposite way. Uh, and the reason for that was that um, this pommel is one of the 1938 changeover types, so it would have had a ball top on it. And when the new pommels came out, uh, this one was screwed on and it, uh, it didn't exactly fit, so it was turned backwards. Uh, I can fix that, though. I have a variety of ways of, uh, of adjusting that. Oh, the grip's a little lighter on the reverse too. See how it's? Um, I'll put the I'll put the obverse on again so you get the. See how dark it is there, and then light there. 
and that would mean that the dagger was positioned for years with the front of it uh, upward so that it uh, was changed color by uh, by the light and let's see what the blade is it's probably a, yeah this blade is a killer and it's really really beautiful it's a fouled anchor type and let's see the uh, yeah, WKC, like I said there, you can see on the other side. Uh, but that's a that's a butt kicking naval dagger there. It's a real gem. So I was glad to find that. Okay, I I want to show you a couple of um, cased plaques that I got too. Um, you can see this is a a beautiful leatherette case. It doesn't have a button on it, so it just lifts up. But inside, it has an award, uh, a Hitler Youth Award. I think it's dated 1940, and it was for a uh, a sporting event. And it comes uh, comes out of the box just like that. See how the uh, see how the original color was um, saved because the metal was covering it. I like that kind of stuff because it really talks to you. And the back of the metal has no um, no maker on it that I can see, but it's um, uh, that's a nice little nice little thing that would really go well with a uh, a couple of Hitler Youth knives. You know, one on each side of it. Can you imagine that? How nice it would look, and then maybe a Hitler Youth shooting award or something. A very nice thing. And. Uh, this case is a, um, a leatherette type and it does have a push button on the front and when you open it up it's it's really cool uh, it's a porcelain uh, German Eagle uh, with a skier uh, and it comes from an, uh, an SA um, ski event I've never seen anything like that it's really it's really pretty and uh, it also comes, it has a recessed portion in the box there for it. And on the back, um, it's, ro it's marked uh, Rosenthal, uh, who really made beautiful porcelain during the period. And they're still in business today. Um, I guess if you asked them about their Third Reich production, they'd probably say they never made anything, but uh, you know how that is. Uh, but that's a great item to display with a a couple of SA daggers just like I said you put one there one there and you got that in the middle and uh, uh, it's a very very nice thing um, another thing I, I bought I just love this uh, it's one of the neatest plaques I've ever seen it has the usual uh, black painted oak frame but in the center, it has this vaulted piece here of this huge um, stylized uh, Wehrmacht eagle. And then a uh, Wehrmacht soldier in the front. He's got his K-98 and he's fully outfitted. And then next to it, um, uh, it has a uh, blacksmith working an anvil. Uh, and on the other side, it has a farmer working his field. And they're showing the uh, uh, industry of, uh, and the forming of uh, Germany uh, with the Wehrmacht in the center. But the way it's done is, is really, really artistic and extremely effective. Uh, I'm still wondering whether I want to maybe keep this one myself. It really, it really is. A, isn't that a dandy? So you can see how far out that, that centerpiece is. You know, we see a lot of wall plaques, but not, not many that have this, uh, uh, this great look to them. I think it's a wonderful piece. So let's see, and then I'll, and I'll show you uh, one more thing that uh, is not mine. Uh, uh, I'm just acting as a go-between on it, but um, as you can see, it's, a, um, it's an SS. Um, what we call candidate sword. Um, the reason we call it a candidate sword is it has no insignia in the 
ebony grip and it has no insignia in the pommel. Um, but what all, and I'll explain more about that in a minute, but what really makes this sword sensational, or Degen, is the fact that the, uh, the blade is, um, is double etched and it has the, the original owner's initials LS on the Ricasso and the etching is beautifully done uh, uh, flower designs. Now what these swords are, um, the man who made this was uh, Paul Mueller. Uh, and the Dagen was made in Dachau. Uh, we know that because the hilt fittings are the stainless steel type. Um, we see a number of these exact type of so-called uh, officer candidate swords with etching um, that were made by Mueller and they were made for SS uh, people that uh, uh, were stationed at Dachau. Uh, they just went in and asked Mueller if they could make a sword for them. They were probably people that did not qualify for an SS sword. Uh, so by not putting any SS markings on the sword, uh, Mueller wasn't breaking any rules. So even though you weren't qualified to wear the Model 36 Dagen, you could wear something like this that exactly resembled an SS sword, but no runes or SS stampings on it. Uh, it's a very beautiful thing that the knot looks like, uh, it looks original to the piece and uh, chances are the uh, original owner acquired that knot during his time and put it on there and uh, uh, as far as he was concerned he was a, a full-blown man there with his own Dagen. So something like this is, um, is very valuable. Um, you can pay in the oh seven eight nine ten thousand dollar area uh, for something like that, but um, but it's well worth it and can be a um, a highlight of your collection. And then some uh, the last things I'm going to show you that I uh, bought at the show um, are my favorite kind of things. Uh, I love stuff like this, and and I'll I'll show these to you also. Uh, I think you'll get a kick out of them. Get them out of here. Make sure this is the right one. Right. Probably this one I want to show you first. Yeah. This is a. Uh, this is really something, collectors. Uh, it's a obviously a, a silver-plated uh, teapot, um, but if you look at the the engraving on the front of it, it has an immobile swastika, and then it has the letters D N S. A P, and you're going well. What the heck is that? Well, for you collectors that know your uh, Third Reich history, um, the NSDAP was called the DN in the beginning uh, when it first started in 1919 by Anton Drexler, and then a year or so later, it was just called NSDAP. So this teapot comes from those very early, early, early years. Uh, and you would have to think that something like this was certainly used in their uh, party office. And uh, you can just imagine who had tea out of an item like this. Um, it's really, um, it's really great. It has a, a hallmark on the bottom. I haven't had a chance to really, I just got this thing and haven't even unwrapped it, but uh, but it's an original piece, and um, uh, I don't know, I might even keep this one. It's, uh, I think it's a very important piece. And then also, I've got to put the lid here. The little pin that holds the lid in 
is missing I can have that repaired without a problem but that's cool <clears throat> and then this next group of things are sensational also um, Okay, we have a pot, a pitcher, and a sugar bowl, and if you look at each piece you'll see that it has uh, the AH monogram, but look at the eagle. The eagle is the first eagle they used during the 1920s. You recognize that? So this service <clears throat> comes from uh, probably 1923, 1924, something like that. Absolutely original, and each piece is marked uh, with the same early eagle uh, and the immobile swastika. You want to see that immobile swastika on early things too, because um, that's the one that they used then. Let's see, where the heck is the? Oh, this is on the lid of it. See, it's the same eagle. And the little strut on the edge of the, the uh, pot is for uh, a spoon, I assume, or a utensil to grab a uh, sugar cube. Uh, and these, these pieces are, um, I think they're made, yeah, uh, yeah, they're made by WMF, who was a silver producer that Hitler used the whole time he was in power. I don't know whether you can see that on there or not, but uh, but this is a very very fine uh, original things here that are extremely rare. So I'm I'm proud to be able to acquire them and uh, and be able to offer them. Uh, for someone that's really interested in uh, AH uh, tableware, uh, these are the uh, uh, epitome here of what you can what you can find. They're just um, they're just really terrific, and especially this DS and this DAP. I just think that's a, that's a phenomenal thing. Uh, so that's uh, that's what I I got yesterday. Thanks a lot for watching. See ya. Okay.